جينجستر أي الشخص الذي ينتمي إلى عصابة مؤخرا تداولت الحركات الذي يستخدمها بعض العصابات بين صغار السن وكل من هو على السوشيال ميديا بهدف إنها شيء ملفت للنظر غافلين عن معنى وخطورة هذه الحركات اليوم مقابلتنا مع شخص كان عايش هذه الحياة بكل ما تعنيه الكلمة شخص غير من حياته ووجد نفسه وغير كل شيء من حوله من أجل حياة أفضل له ولعائلته نابوليون The life of an outlaw <تصفيق> هاي وصلت اتوقع هذا المكان اللي الرجال موجود فيه حسب ما قالوا لي والله يستور ما اعرف الرجال حيعصب ولا دخلتي غلط اوف 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 اتوقع هذاك هو هذاك هو بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello. Hey. Hi. والله عندي وشوم. هذا ريل. هذا وياي هذا قبو إسلام جاهلية. آه. أي أنت يو يعني gangs و guns. قبو يعني before. شوية. طيب أنا عندي أسئلة. Yes. عن كذا. عادي أنا أسأل. No problem. حياك الله. ما في مشكلة. No problem. ما في مشكلة. ما عند سلاح ذا شيء. ما في مشكلة. ما في جن. لا لا الهند ما في. قبل إسلام. Maybe. أنت مسلم. أنا مسلم الهند. الحمد لله. ما شاء الله. أنا صاحبي. Gang like this. Yes. هو يعني he thinking يعني power. هو هذا مشكلة كبير هذا ما في كويس نجلس let's sit and I will ask you questions إن شاء الله okay and hopefully your friend will benefit questions كثير ما في مشكلة okay بسم الله بسم الله ليش هذا قابو إسلام آه هذا قابو إسلام جاهلية هذا أينا gang قابو إسلام boom boom gang gang انت انا الهند مسلم ما شاء الله شكل انت يعني ما في مشكله ما شاء الله يلا ليتس جو كورونا فايروس اوه هاي هاي سين ذا سيبريشن اوف كورس هاي تراي تو جيف مي سوت اور سمثينج Yeah, I, I, I feel like I'm doing another right hit him up video. Plus, he came here, came here, came here. I'm back. Before we start the interview, I yes. want to thank you for making the time to interview you today. Um, this is welcome. one of the most requested videos by the audience so far. And um, we're going to go through a couple of questions. And sure. any questions you don't feel comfortable with answering, just say sure. skip. Definitely. Definitely. First question would be, yeah. Who is Napoleon or who was he? Yes, um, Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Napoleon, you know, I got that name from Tupac. Um, when he decided to put the rap group together, the outlaws, he wanted to give us all names of so called, um, what we would say at that particular time, enemies of the West or tyrants of the world, you know mm. what I mean? So I was Napoleon. Um, another member, Gaddafi from the Libyan president, Idi Amin mm. from the former Uganda president, Castro, Cuban president, uh, former Cuban president, Hussein after Saddam Hussein, um, Tupac changed his name to Machiavelli, and um, after the, I think he's an Italian writer, author, or something yeah. like that, who faked his death, and um, there was one more, Young Noble, of course, that was course. his name when he came in, but you know, Pac just wanted to give us a name, Big Sight, Mussolini. <laughs> oh, the whole thing. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he wanted to give us names of so-called tyrants of the world or enemies. But I got the name Napoleon really because of my height. You know what I mean? <laughs> and Pop used to always say I have the short man complex. So yeah. it kind of, it just, it was just Mashallah. perfect, Mashallah. you know? <laughs> how did you end up in the rap slash gang realm? Um, tell me more about that. And how old are you when you actually like started into that yeah. lifestyle? Actually, I was um, I was in, I was outside in the streets, hanging on the block, 
probably at 11, 12 years old. 11, 12, 12 years, years old. old. Because even though my grandparents, I, I, give them, I give them the props and the respect of really trying their best to raise us, mm. but it was difficult for them. Like mm. my grandmother was one of them old school, down south, originally from West Virginia, mm. Christian woman, always had like two or three times a week at church. One of them type of people that always spoke about God. She was very positive. Mm. She tried her best to raise us, but in our household, it was eight of us, kids, my brothers, my cousins. Uh, we had family members living in the attic and the basement. My grandmother wouldn't turn no one away. You know what I mean? Everyone was welcome. So it was difficult for older people at that particular time. Like my, and my grandfather, who was, uh, he wasn't my, he, he was married to my grandmother. Mm. Um, he wasn't my grandfather by blood, but he raised me and yeah. my brother. So he was our grandfather, you know? He worked at night. You know what I mean? He drove, he drove trucks. Mm. So my grandmother couldn't really take care of eight bad kids during the day. So when I'm 11, 12 years old, I was telling my grandmother I'm going to the park to hang with some friends. I was on the block next to drug dealers. You know what I mean? My brothers and my cousins, they started before me, 13, 14 years old. They was already selling drugs. Wow. So I was outside on the block, man. When I was 11, 12, man, I seen it all pretty much. You know what I mean? I seen people getting beat up on the block. I seen people fighting, selling drugs. The cops coming, you know, pushing people against the wall, checking them for no reason. Other guys coming from neighborhoods, pulling out guns, robbing. Like I was seeing that at a young age, wow. which wow. is abnormal for a kid. That's you know crazy. I mean? you, say, you say that you grew up with your grandparents. What happened to your actual parents? My parents, when I was three years old, got mur murdered in front of me, my mother and father. They right in murdered, front of your right eyes? Right in front of my eyes. I was in a house myself, my brother uh, Mooney, and my little brother Camille. Mooney was four years old, I was three years old. My baby brother was six months old at the time. Um, the people that killed them was um, my so-called godparents. You know, in American yeah. culture, we have godparents. One of them was my godfather. You know what I mean? So Oof. he was very close to my father. Not only that, he grew up with my father since he was 14, 15 years old. Mm. He used to sleep at my grandmother's house. So they decided to come and kill my parents. You know, they shot my father one time. He died instantly. They shot my mother. They took my mother. They shot her 13 times. She was trying to protect me and my brothers 13 times before she died. And when they went to court and the judge asked him, uh, was you planning on killing the kids? His exact words was yes, but we ran out of bullets shooting at the mother, you know, so. But they died as Muslim because my mother and father converted to Islam. Alhamdulillah, so, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Shaheed, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. inshallah. How did you actually meet Pac? I met Pac, man, um, you know, Gaddafi from the Outlaws, which is Yafeyo. Mm -hmm. We was childhood friends. His mother was family friends with, um, with my cousins who were more mm -hmm. like an auntie to me. And um, so when we was kids, maybe nine, 10 years old, his mother would pick me up from my neighborhood. I was wow. in a bad neighborhood. He lived in the suburbs, Montclair, which is mm -hmm. a good neighborhood. Good neighborhood. And yeah, she would yeah, take yeah. me there and I would spend a night and it was just different. I felt like I was yeah. in a whole nother world. Yeah. You know what I mean? So years went past and I lost contact with him and I ran into his mom's again. And at that particular time in my life, I was already writing. You know what I mean? And she told me her son was also writing. And she was like, he's the brother, half brother of Tupac Shakur. Mm -hmm. I knew Pac at that. I knew who he was. I mean, yeah. he already put one album out. And she was like, if you serious, they would be in New York City, go over there. So I, me and my brother Siki hopped on the train and went over there and met Pac. And from that day on, I've been with him. That you know, was what, like, I would say 1993, 94, wow. something wow. like that. You That's know what crazy. Definitely. And all of the videos I've seen you with Pac, you guys yes. seem to connect yes. smoothly. Definitely, and he's definitely. always talking highly about you. Yeah, Pac. What man. was that like? How was that like? Man, you know, Pac being... was like a big brother to me. Mm. We connected from day one. You know yeah. what I mean? I think um, I was one of the guys that um, Pac gave respect to because I was always, I would give it, I had a mouth for him. Mm. You know what I mean? I wasn't a yes man. So I think he liked that about me. Like a lot of the group members, they was this little majority. Everyone was related to him, except for myself, Fatal, and Young Noble. But we all came together from someone else that he was related. So he looked at us all as family. You know wow. what I mean? So wow. we connected from day one. And I think Pop liked me because when I came from the beginning, I would mouth back with him. Because mm. you know he was mm. this aggressive dude, always telling people, and I'd be like, man, I ain't doing that. I ain't, man. Yeah. Yeah. We argue a lot. Like big brother, little brother. But I think he liked that side of me. <laughs> now, because of that, there's rumors that say, well. You know, there's a lot of unfinished beef with Mutan. That's why he fled the <laughs> states and came to Saudi Arabia. Sa, sa, sa. You know, you know, you get that a lot, but they have to realize, man. Pac died in 1996. Yeah, I became Muslim 2002. Wow. I didn't leave America till 2010. 
Oh wow. So if that was the case, <laughs> where was I hiding for that, yeah. that do you know what I mean? That Those, business would have been Yeah, finished. that 15 yeah. years or something like that, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. I left the States because, alhamdulillah, I became Muslim. And um, I had my second son, Muhammad. Mashallah. My first son, Salih, was my oldest son. I had my second son, Muhammad. I started learning more about the religion of Islam. I already came to Saudi Arabia, and I was like, you know what? I really want to, I, I want to change. I don't want to raise my son yeah. and my kids, future kids or whatever, in the environment that I was raised in. If I could take them to a Muslim country, it's more peaceful. I can learn the religion myself. I can learn Arabic. That's why I left, you know what I mean? So those that know me, man, they know there's not a soul breathing that's going to say they chased me out of anywhere. You know what Mashallah. I mean? <laughs> we, talk, we talked about uh, Park, uh, Park briefly. So, Do you actually know who killed Park? You can answer with a yes definitely. or no. I mean. No, nah, we kind of know where it came from, definitely. Mm -hmm. We don't know the one, we don't really know who actually pulled the trigger, but we do know, you know, and, and they admitted it. You know, one of the main guys who was in the car, he, he admitted everything. Oh, know, okay. He was the uncle of the Orlando Anderson, which is the guy Tupac got into a fight with. He's a crip, a gangster, mm. who was already mm. known to be a killer. Mm. So when Pac got into a fight with him, it was already a chance that the, the cats knew that he, was, yeah, he could have came back. Down, yeah. So what happened is um, the uncle who was also in the car, he explained everything you know, live on TV. He like snitched and said, you know what, I'm I letting did. everything out because I guess he got caught with you know, some drugs or whatever mm. and the police was about mm. to give him so many years in prison they told us give him something so he just started saying look this is what happened today yeah you know what i mean so you can hear from the horse's mouth himself what happened to Pop. Oh, wow. and he admitted that it was his crew the south side crips from compton that they retaliated back from pop fighting his nephew you know what i mean we don't know who actually pulled the trigger but we definitely know it came from that side so for a fact for all the rumors out there yes pop is yeah, unfortunately, he's not yes. in Morocco. Yes. He's not in Afghanistan. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he's not in Somalia. Yeah, he's yeah. in Somalia. Nah, unfortunately, yeah. he died and he died young. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Unfortunately, he was what 25, 25 26? years old. He's Twenty-five yeah. years old when he died. Man. When did you actually start practicing Islam? And Definitely. were you born a Muslim, or did you yeah. convert to Islam? I would be considered born a Muslim because my mother and father converted to Islam before I was born. But after their murder. I was raised Christian. My grandmother, like I still recall the time that my grandmother was making me get on my knees and pray to Jesus. Mm. I still remember those days, like every night, you know, you know, coming from a household as a young kid, you don't hear my parents ever saying, pray to God. I mean, Jesus, we was yeah. only praying to God as a kid. So I remember the time to switch. My mother, father get murdered. Now I'm living with my grandmother and all of a sudden, every night before we go to sleep, she yeah. made us get on our knees at the bed and we started praying to this a name that I never heard of before, mm -hmm. Jesus, you know? Mm -hmm. But as kids, we just going with the flow, you know what I mean? So I was born Muslim, raised Christian. Alhamdulillah, Allah guided me back to Islam. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. But you spoke about Hajj. How yes. was that as a first experience? That must have been It was you know, amazing. amazing. But first, let's get some coffee. Bismillah. And then we come you know back to this. You know what you're doing? I'm doing a little something, something. Bismillah. A little something, something. Bismillah. You don't know. Uh, I know. Tell me more about the coffee shop. like. MW Cafe, so mm. I opened this coffee shop. Um, me and my partner, Mansoor, shout out to Mansoor, Al Faisu, about six months ago. Mashallah. And um, you know, I've, I've been trying to get into the coffee business for years. I've been studying mm. like for years, you know what I mean? My Mashallah. grandfather, he's originally from Cuba, he's the one who got hooked on coffee as a kid. Mashallah. And then I just decided I couldn't drink any Hennessy anymore, <laughs> so I needed something brown and strong. And yeah, coffee. yeah, Bismillah. You know, Bismillah. Show us what you got. Um, tell me more about your Hajj experience. How, how was that like? The Hajj, man, it, it was the it was amazing. Yeah, you know, I didn't experience just to experience something like that. When I went to Hajj, it was two thousand and three, mm. and this was before the internet. Yeah, this is before the internet. You know, I'm not a professional. I know Adrian probably looking at me like, what is he doing? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Sorry, it was before social media. Yeah, sorry about that. Not before the internet. It was before mm. social media. So. For me, I didn't really know too much about the Middle East. Okay. And, um, Bismillah. Hopefully, this will be the best espresso you ever had. Inshallah. In life, inshallah. inshallah. I didn't know too much about the Middle East. So, for me, it was, um, you know, it was the Iraq War. So, LA Times did an interview with me. They came to my barbershop, and it was at my, me and my brother barbershop, and he was like, Why would you go to the Middle East when yeah. there's a war there, Iraq? And you know what I mean? And I was like, Well, I grew up in Jersey and LA, man. I, I survived those wars. I'm not afraid. You know what <laughs> no, I mean? Don't worry about that. And when I got off the plane, I didn't know nobody. Just imagine wow. you come in and they telling me it's desert. 
but I was saying streets, I was uh. saying all types of stuff. I'm like, man, they made it seem like it's nothing but sand and camels out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the people was very hospitable. You know, oh, meeting sure. people that I didn't even know from all walks of life, all oh, country, sure. similar to like what Michael Mech said, man. Yeah. You start seeing people from all backgrounds, different colors, different nationalities, different languages, but everybody wow. is on that and road. Was that the first time? For you visiting Saudi, the first time visiting Saudi wow. and the Middle East. Wow, that is Saudi amazing. So we good, huh? Bismillah. Jazakallah khair. Of course, you guys know um, <laughs> when you actually come to the coffee shop, yes. Adrian is gonna be the one making the coffee. If you're trying to book muta, it's gonna have a special charge. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bismillah. Let's try this out. Try Bismillah. Ah, I do a one shot. Wow, he took I that do down like shot. a pro, bro. Alhamdulillah, man. Alhamdulillah. Khair. <laughs> Let's get back to the questions. Let's get this. We're back. We're back. In your opinion, what's the yes. difference between the rap industry back then and yes. today? Are rappers today doing it for the money, fame? Is it something I think, easy? Um, I would say, man, back then, we really tried our best to put a message out. You know, that we thought, according to ourselves, we was like ghetto journalists. Mm. We felt like the music industry was a way to tell our stories to the rest of the world. Nowadays, it seems like it doesn't have that message anymore. There's no, there's no foundation behind the lyrics anymore. There's, they, the foundation is lost. I mean, there's no message anymore. Nowadays, from what I see, like you got rainbow rappers. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I know what you're talking like these jokers looking like rainbow lattes that we sell here at MW Cafe. Yeah, yeah, so, you yeah. got, so you got these. It's weird now. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't know. If, I don't know if the rappers like Big Daddy Kane and Eric B and Rakim thought that about us. When we came in, it was like, what's this new genre, genre of rap yeah. or music? But nowadays, I, it's strange. Do you, think, do you think it's because the taste of people in music has suddenly just changed? I think yeah. rap nowadays, because like I said, we, had, we try to do a mesh. Like NWA, for example, when they first came out from Compton, they was, they was highlighting, they, was, they, they put a light on gang culture of LA that none of us know about even in New Jersey. They put a light on how gang culture in LA, how they was killing each other, mm. but at the same time, their music was like a cry for help. Pop did the same thing. Yeah, the there was outlaws, always a message Yeah, we try to song. put a message behind it. Now, days, I think it's just about the money. You know what I mean? And um, of course, you can't blame them because if they're gonna get in the music, you wanna be able to survive. Yeah, you wanna yeah, be, yeah. Even when we went, we wanted to make money as well. You yeah. know what I mean? But I think it's easier now. It's easier to be a, rap, a rapper and it's easy to, to make money in the industry now. I'm talking about Gaddafi and Hussein and yes. all these Muslim names and that's why you became a Muslim. <laughs> Has any of your friends converted to Islam because of you or you someone know, man, around you? A lot of friends and family members accept the religion of Islam. I never really, of course, only a lot make Muslims. So I never really sit and try to take the credit of it, but I can't say that like my brothers, alhamdulillah, accepted Islam. Mashallah, I had cousins. I had, I had a good amount of friends that also accepted the religion of Islam, man. But we know Hidayah is from Allah. You know what I mean? And, uh, so I, well, we're thankful for that, alhamdulillah. Exactly. Okay. Mashallah, how many kids do you have? Five kids. Five, mashallah. <laughs> so the question is, how yes. is it different from raising your kids in the States and raising them here? Mashallah, Aki, um, I, I see the difference. It's like night and day. Wow. We're not saying that because America, you gotta understand, is a place where people can do whatever they want, you know what I mean? And um, the society will accept that, you know what I mean? It's not like um, and you are a product of your environment. So the reminders, you hear the event, you know what I mean? So it's so much reminders around us that even the, the graffiti on the wall will be lagged at Allah Muhammad Rasulullah. In America, it's the opposite. The reminders and stuff that's calling you, you will see a liquor store in every corner. Exactly. You know what I mean? You will smell marijuana smoke. Literally in California, it smell like weed. Yeah. The whole state. That's the oxygen. <laughs> yeah, the oxygen is marijuana. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'll be walking down the street like, man, it just smell like just a don't pound of weed don't, outside. Don't sniff too much. Yeah, don't <laughs> sniff too much. So this is the reminders that you're going to get yeah. there. And the reminders here, you'll get them based on Islam. So we're not saying that, um, you know what I mean? So I, I prefer, I, I see the difference when my kids came here. Yeah. Yeah. How many years, mashallah, you've lived in Saudi? I lived in Saudi 10 years now. 10 years, so how, how was your Arabic? I'm from Arabic. 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 I'm from
الحمد لله شوية أنا أكتب أنا كريم أنا أكتب لازم لازم you have to you have to speak with me in Arabic okay it's my friend Cedis y'all know Arabic man stop talking to me in Arabic yeah whether you're American like Muhammad yeah Arabic 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 from Medina dates, you know what I mean? <laughs> Mashallah, shout out to everybody. Uh, if you recall, I asked in the beginning, who is Napoleon? Yes. To conclude this amazing interview, Thank I would like brother. to ask, yeah, awesome. who is Muta now? Alhamdulillah, Muta now is uh, Muta. In Arabic, mean Ta, Alif Ain. Mashallah, You know me, I'm just a person, man, but I think a lot that he guided me to the religion of Islam. Mashallah. I had the opportunity you know, to live here in a Muslim country, to raise my kids, you know what I mean? Simple life, you know what I mean? I come to my coffee shop, I go to Smoky, smoky Beers, eat some ribs, halal ribs, mashallah. You guys know about that Simple spot. life, man, just, you yeah. know what I mean? I, I'm just a simple individual that's, you know, laid back, you know what I mean? And just um, enjoying life day by day. Well, Zakallah khair. Zakallah khair, bro. It was uh, an amazing interview. Thank it's you, always bro. a pleasure to have you. <laughs> and you guys will definitely see him in more videos. Inshallah. How many likes we should get on this video? Man. Like, I need a lot. We need a lot. Yeah. We need a lot. We need them to share it, inshallah. Like, if you think it's a good video, share it, share it, share yeah, it, inshallah. Like they will, they will inshallah. share it. Zakallah khair for everything. Thank I would have shook your hand. You got do this. You know? <laughs> no, it's coronavirus time. So so, so, so. Thank you, brother. Thank you, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one. As always, peace, respect, and love. Proud, but never satisfied. As-salamu alaykum. Right. Salah, dope, bro. That was it. Man. That was it. <laughs> That's dope, son. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs>